Hello, and thank you so much for tuning into the mobility. Mobility Bros. <laughs> we said it all the time. Like, we got no energy, man. Listen, <laughs> we, we both didn't sleep good. <laughs> in the morning. So we had the moment. We ain't, we ain't falling out of chairs, so we're good. We just showed we're up. Here. We're showing up. We're showing up. And maybe we don't feel like the best, uh, but we're the realest. And I appreciate you, Ron. How are you, man? Uh, I'm doing okay, man. Energy, like I said, man, just I'm grinding two days out for my show. Um, I'm excited to get on stage, but I'll be excited when it's over. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. So yeah. for, for people who don't know about the mobility, Bose, what do we talk about here? We talk about human mobility, athletic mindset, pain reduction, pain management, the thoughts and processes of practitioners, the mindsets of you guys and us. Uh, my name is Coach Cliff. This is Ron Hilton. And we are so excited to be here, even showing up uh, to share with you guys a little bit about our topic today, what we want to talk about. Ron, if you don't know, has been working his butt off for a physique show. He's been going all natural. He's been training his butt off. And um, and it's it's grind time, right? How far out is your show? Uh, so, um, tomorrow is check-in and polygraph and then Sunday is, is stage time. So I'll get up and be on stage 10 o'clock in the morning. Um, which is nice. I, I'm the first group to go through. So I'll be maybe an hour tops and nice. then, um, so yeah, it'd be, it, it's, it's going to be fun. It, it, it's been a journey dropped 50, 53 pounds. So around that. So it's been a journey. 53 pounds. How much muscle did you put on? Um, I have to look at my, um, not even, not even worried about it. He's like, I'm just going in. I was going I, in. I put on muscle. I dropped the yeah. weight. So this is what I can tell you. My back is like, it looks huge. Like it, it I mean, when oh, I expand out my back, it's probably the biggest I've ever had it. How are your pose practices? For those who don't know, there's poses associated with uh, the qualifications and how you rank and how you move forward in the competition. Yeah, the, the poses, um, I, I have a routine that my coach gave me. Nice. Um, I honestly still haven't nailed it, but I'm still working on it. So um, I'll do some run-throughs tonight, record, send him some, send it so... I'll probably keep doing run-throughs and practice all the way up until Sunday. So, How valuable is it for you, being a professional with nearly two decades of experience as well, to have a coach to be accountable to, especially during this time, this, this grind time where, where dedication really kicks Dude, in? It is so valuable because it, it keeps you in check. It, there's someone else doing the thinking for you. Um, and um, my strength coach uh, years ago told me, Coaches need coaches too. So it doesn't matter how brilliant or how good you are. Um, you're you need some type of coaching or help, even though if you know what you're doing, um, it's always good to have that. So another set of eyes, a thinking partner, someone yeah. to complain to, someone yeah. to be real with, yeah. right? Someone to tie your work and your worth and your investment into. It's a it's a beautiful relationship. I don't think AI can replace that, man. I'm Absolutely. sorry. Um, so tell us about the topic. Y'all, those who are still here, thank you so much. Give a thumbs up and like and subscribe and do all the things. Uh, we're primarily on YouTube and hoping to get up to other platforms. You'll probably find us sharing this stuff on our social media platform channels and connecting with as many people as possible. So feel free to communicate, like, subscribe. We appreciate you. Uh, real quick before we go, shout out to our sponsors, Be Legendary Apparel. They stronger than yesterday, people. <laughs> fitness essentials appreciate all of the work that they do fitness essentials llc you can find them at fitness-essentials.now.site and sign up for a consultation or a deep dive listening so we can figure out how we can help you with your health and nutrition cliff is the man he is the man <laughs> i appreciate you bro it's been a beautiful journey uh building this business and continuing to build a business through uh all the adversities innovating and Enough about that. We're here to talk about what, Ron? What are we here to talk about? Tell the people. Talking about can someone overtrain? Can can athlete overtrain? And is that and, and as you stated, is is that the answer or the question? Mm, is that <laughs> the answer or the question? Yeah. 
because a lot of us who got into this maybe in high school, exercising in high school, some of it was an ego lifting. Some of it was keeping up and doing things that we didn't really have experience in. Some of it was our first four years in the weight room that we were physically able to do it on our own. Some of it was following coaching programs, you know, for our athletes out there who did high school sports. Some of us maybe not, maybe chose to go to uh, a local gym or, you know, Gold's Gym or Retro Fitness or you remember? Remember those? <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. The goals are still holding it down, but yeah, you know, those were in our area in the East Coast area. So that's what they did. And they learned from a trainer. Maybe they invested or their parents invested in helping them get help or they worked out with their dad. Um, And all this time, I feel like at that age, it was all about push and weight and size yeah. oh yeah absolutely right? for me as, as a male like better you know with my per personal perspective and my background it just felt like that you know yeah as i gotten older you know my birthday's coming up in a couple of weeks actually in the christmas holiday uh i realized like longevity is important that i'm you know there's so much that we do to our bodies on the inside that we don't even really take the time to look at and so burning out certain, you know, molecules in our body that helps us re reproduce the cells in our body to continue for us to like live, right? We have to reproduce mm -hmm. heart cells. We have to reproduce lung cells. We have to reproduce, you know, um, blood cells. And, and as we age and as we wear and tear this thing, that slows down. I try to tell people, imagine a lizard's tail. You catch a lizard, you rip his tail off, it grows back. Not yeah. the same, but it grows back. Like you keep doing that, and that tail ain't gonna keep growing. It's gonna stop. <laughs> it's gonna stop growing. That lizard's gonna die or be very upset. You know what I mean? Either way. So I put the question back to you. What do you think, Ron? Can we overtrain? Do we overtrain? I so I think, you know, so I just want to read a little caption and I'm gonna kind of play off it. You know, from the article I pulled up, uh, overtraining, what it what what it is, uh, symptoms and recovery, overtraining syndrome. So this syndrome occurs when an athlete doesn't adequately recover after uh, repetitive, intense training and can include fatigue, decline performance and potential injury. Right. So I think that, you know, be, me being a sports performance guy and working with athletes, um, there has to be a balance. Right. So if you're someone who is out there grinding and, and, you know, athletes at a high level, they train hours a day. But I think the point is, you know, and what I, what I do see with those athletes, even with some of the local, well, well kind of with some of the local athletes, because some of the local athletes, they just keep going. <laughs> they just keep going and they, they, they're just wondering why, they're, why their Achilles heel hurt, their Achilles hurt. And then they're like, I've been running like this without stretching and doing anything since I was 25 and I'm 50, but you're yeah. overtraining, bro. You're not, you're not doing anything for your own rehab and recovery, not rest time. Right. Mm. So I, I think there has to be a balance. If you're, if you're someone who is balls to the walls training hard and you're not let, you're not getting the proper sleep, you're not mm. getting proper water intake. Sleep is huge. You know, that's when your body recovers. That's when muscle tissue recovers. That's when all your cells regenerate. That's when everything comes together when you sleep, right? Um, but if you're doing a lack of sleep, overtraining, overworking, you're going to burn out. And then you're going to be like, this freaking sucks. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, and and, and it's, it, no longer, it no longer becomes fun. But I, I do believe that there's some people who get really tapped in the head and they just this is what I got to do. I got to keep going. I got to keep going until I die, you know, and that's not healthy. Yeah, I, I agree. I think um, we know of people that suffer from, you know, all sorts of addictions and exercise um, can become an addiction. You know, there's, there's um, body, you know, imagery issues, body, body. Body dysmorphia. Yes. Which causes a lot of people to, do really difficult things to their body, including overtraining, right? And um, or not eating enough or all the different things. Like I, I don't want to go too, too deep 
yeah. into that without having maybe an expert on to, to Absolutely. share Absolutely. What, what we can do to help encourage and, and empower and support those communities. Um, but what what I got here is optimal the the optimal amount of training varies per person to person, and we all know that depending on if you're an athlete, if you're I do agree um, high end, if it's necessary for movies. There's so many reasons why people um, would would overtrain. Um, like it depends on the factors, right? Age level, health status, individual goals. However, uh, there are guidelines to optimal training. Those, that 72 hour window is a lot of what I teach my my clients. Like, don't let 72 hours pass you by without training again. Mm -hmm. uh, that way, you can stay within the the window of adaptation and change for the physical body versus being too far out that window where the body has to now reset. Right, uh, it's not expecting that change. It's not consistent enough, um, and not too back to back where you can't have low impact days maybe you want to do pilates after you do a strength training exercise with a fitness coach maybe you want to do bar or yoga or yoga, yeah. you know, a specific a specific low lower impact uh maybe you want to hike maybe you want to walk maybe you want to play something more high impact maybe you want to do like um racquetball or pickleball in between your strength training days that's great those all good exercise uh but again like ron you were what you notated I think it's important for us to recognize that, hey, um, if I'm not stretching, if I'm not taking care of my body and I'm going out there and I'm doing the same thing for 40 years, 20 years, 30 years, 25, I think you said yep. uh, specifically, then boom, something's going to tear, something's going to break, something's going to give. So um, what do you think about like the duration or the intensity or the rest and recovery time when it comes to overtraining? So duration, intensity, and rest and recovery, I, I think depending on what you're doing, it, it can vary. Um, I think um, I, I would say for like duration for like training, again, it varies. Like it depends on what you're doing, what your, what your optimal goal is. I would say just for the average person, you know, working out, you know, training, just keeping on, a, a, just keeping it very, very um, simplistic, maybe three to four, three to four or four times a week, anywhere from 30 to 40, 45 minutes. You know, I, I still believe that you can do an hour workout and pack it with really good stuff, but you don't necessarily have to train for a whole hour, right? And then rest and recovery, you know, rest and recovery, I would say, you know, it's, it's, that, it's that nice cool down. You know, I always say you could do some static stretching, um, you know, make sure that you're, you know, I, I would say if you are someone that is, you know, really working out and training, at least give yourself one or two days where you completely take off, you know, so you get that in that off could be, you can do a little bit of yoga and stuff like that. But honestly, I would say, you know, just take it off. <laughs> just take a break. Just take a break. You know, just take a break. I mean, I was, um. Would you encourage static stretching if necessary? Yeah, right. Of course, do what your body's asking for. Yeah, do what you, yeah, do what your body's asking for. You know. Yeah, I would. I would, I would uh, listening to um, David Goggins, David Goggins talk about you know, in a, <laughs> what, what you it? need your knees for? Stay hard, stay hard, right? That's what he says. You, stay hard. You don't need knees when you're dead, bro. What you need knees when you're dead? What you, you need knees for, right? But you know, he said I, I respect that, his mindset. That works. He said something that blew that blew me away because he's such a hardcore person. He says you need a recovery day. I was like, oh, okay, because you it. see him every video. You see him running for miles, right? Going hard out there. He's an ultra ultra mar marathon run. This guy has run. He runs hundred mile marathons back to back, like like legit, right? So David Goggins, you know, he's he's out there, you know, you know, what do you need these for? You know, stay hard. And the, but then he, he turns around and says, you know what? You need a day to recover. You need a day to rest. So, you know, yeah. something like that, that that's training at a high level. And he knows that. And if you ever read his book, um, he talked about how he. Which, what's the title of the book? Um, The book is. um, Oh, my God. Let's drop it in the description. Go ahead. Continue. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll think of it really. I'll think of it, but I read it. I listened to his podcast and I, and I read his book. Um, and in the book, he talks about how 
Um, he he never he actually never stretched. He never stretched. And then there was a day where he was in a in his room. He thought he was dying. I kid you not, dying. Wow. Right? Because his whole body locked up. Oh no. Whole body locked up, right? Like he thought he was on his deathbed. That's how bad it was, right? Yeah. yeah. So um when he realized what was going on at some point he actually started stretching and then everything started open up. Now this dude, now it, 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 it's probably a little extreme, but he stretches like one to two hours a day. Oh, he has the time to really care for his body. Yeah. So he puts in that time to do it because he knows now that's important. That's what something he should have been doing, but he never did that. And I just think no one ever really trained, no one ever taught him that, you know, him being, you know, in the military, I mean, they did a, a lot of intense uh, exercising and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, good book. If I can ever think of it right now, My nah, brain- we'll drop it in the chat. Don't even worry about it. We'll drop it in the comments, but that's a great point. Of, that's a great point. Right. So a lot of people will look at that and say, Oh, that guy's overtrained. And other people will look at that and say, that guy's determined, you know, and other people will look at that and, and be super intimidated uh, because he cursed. So like stay hard. And other people will look at that and be like, that's exactly what I needed to wake up. And I think as long as you're feeling something, then the the message is coming through in some way. Um, when I think about like, where are the occupations where people tend to overtrain the most? What do you think? You know, in, in this topic of overtraining, what what are some of the the key occupations so people can start to look at them? Like, do you think that? there's occupations in this, in this industry, like construction work. There's a lot of lifting, heavy movement. That's actually a really good question. You got jackhammers. You got these guys that are coming in with shoulder injuries and all these different injuries, similar to overtraining. So what do you got? Let me know what's on top of your head with that. Well, I didn't know because I wasn't thinking about the the industry, but you're testing me now. So I guess (laughs) so. I guess I would say if you were talking about industry, industry people. Um, and the thing is, they don't know. I, I think people that are in like physical jobs, they don't realize that they're overtraining because they're just they're doing they're just going through the motions. Right. Mm-hmm. So they constantly lifting, they're doing, they're moving, they're turning and stuff like that. Um, Sometimes the same way for years. Yeah, like, it's, it's almost like, like the it's almost like the. um the carpenter with the hammer, he's 70 years old. He's been doing that same repetitive motion for 50 years, you know, and all of a sudden he has um he has shoulder, he has shoulder issues, or he has uh, you know, tennis elbow or whatever the case may be, he may have that. So um that was a tough one, Cliff, because because when people in when people in industry, it's they're not they're doing the physical work for a paycheck, you know? So the physical work, so it, it because they have to show up for a paycheck, they'll put their body through what they need to put it through to, so they can make that paycheck, right? Mm-hmm. So it's a, I would say it's, it's kind of a little different from the athlete, but I think at the end of the day, some of the injuries can be similar. You know, you can have shoulder injuries, you can have back injuries, you can have knee injuries, ankle injuries, neck pain, um you know arthritis in the hands a a lot of a lot of like what happens can spill over into when you talk about industry um even even in uh as physical therapists uh, massage therapists um i i would say not let me let me let me narrow that down massage therapists that specialize in sports and pain management right because we are we are a, uh, a a very special group of people, and we actually we move the body, we move tissue, we move limbs. You know, we 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 do a lot of muscle and tissue manipulation and stretching, and um, and in a, in a high volume event, in in a five hour period, you can work on 12, 12, 12 to fifteen athletes. I mean, it's and everything's back to back, right? Mm-hmm. Everything's back to back, nonstop. You know, and I'll and I'll be honest with you, I, I I've gotten to the point where I was like burnt out 
low back bothering me. And I'm like, who's next? Who's next? You know? And at the end of the day, it probably, even though I'm really good at what I do and I know I won't cause any injury, but it, 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 it doesn't do me any good if I, if I'm burning myself out so I can keep taking care of these people so they can keep functioning and they can stay in recovery, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, what, you know, I just think there's so many aspects to overtraining things that we think about on a regular, like, oh, yeah, that guy running a lot or up oh, that bodybuilder or that person, you know, dieting for their wedding. Um, and then there's things we don't even think about, like that carpenter or, you know, that massage therapist hands or um, that that laborer. Right. Right. And I think when it comes to the body, it can only do so many things. I think we got up to seven, right? With the hinging and the twists and the bends and the gating and stuff like that. So recognizing that everything that we do as humans is occupying some form of neurological connection, muscular connection, skeletal connection. Like that is just the the body and interacting with the space and technology and life and Absolutely. Absolutely. David yeah. Goggins can't hurt me. That's that's the name of it. Can't hurt me. Nice. See, I can't knew it was me. gonna come through. So can't um, hurt me. very see, good book, y'all. Just so you guys, just so we could wrap, because we want thank you guys so much for following through and being here and, and catching up with us and being with us. Uh we wouldn't be able to do this without the likes and the shares and the friends and the, the community and and you know, we do it for us as well. And I, I'm really glad to spend this time with you, Ron. And you too, brother. And Appreciate pick you. your brain, whether we have super high energy or we're just coming at it. Real. I know, dude. I think out of what, 33 shows now, this is the lowest energy we've ever had. Usually we're like <laughs> off the chain, but no, it's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's test it out. Let's see if this actually, you know, people feel like we're not shouting at them. <laughs> no, it's like we're high, we're high, we're high on YouTube here, bro. <laughs> yeah 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 there you go uh, just joking uh, we're not high we are not high okay so what you know we're not yeah thank you no no tired but tired, no. Tired, tired. um so frequency uh duration rest and recovery sleep and nutrition are optimal things that you can either balance or overdo um so pay attention to those key uh, six things again frequency intensity duration rest and recovery sleep and nutrition i think um that's a a lot to focus on with everything else in the world so do you have any final finals for those people are you an overtrainer what camp are you in draw the line in the sand let's see where you go with this and our final is is um if you're an athlete or you know the point that uh cliff made if you're someone that's an industry worker um, be conscious of your body and, and, and understand recovery, you know, um, whether that is making sure you get enough sleep, make sure you're stretching, get a massage, um, make sure, may, maybe get in a hot tub, you know, just do, do the things that are going to recover your body. And then, um, if you're, if you're having pain and stuff, go see a medical professional and, and just get some feedback on what's going on with your, with you. So you can actually um, take care of that, you know. And I, I can tell you that I work out of out of a chiropractic clinic. It's a it's a it's a very busy clinic, and I don't understand. There are people literally crawling in in pain, and they say, I, "I'm like, oh my god, what happened?" You know, they've been in pain for weeks, but they wait until <laughs> they wait until they can't take it anymore until that's wow. when they come in. I'm like, like if you're that bad, you should you should have came in as soon as you start feeling acute like pain. You shouldn't have held out because you got to show up for work and do all this. Now you're gonna be out of work because you didn't take the right steps to do what you got to do. So make sure you do the right steps to focus on your recovery and your healing um, for over if you know if and and just be conscious of that. That's a beautiful message. I think it's important for us to recognize that. Definitely acknowledging getting in there, not waiting to get in there, but getting in there sooner so you can take care of yourself versus waiting. And now <laughs> you're out of work longer. There's so much more. Yeah. I think 
when it comes to overtraining, you know, there's seasons in our lives where our body is is young enough and can recover enough, and not all of us are the same. Um, and there are times where we undertrain, and I think we went through that in the last three years. A lot of people either overtrained or undertrained because there wasn't much to do. Um, and now, well, yeah, I think I think when I turned sideways, my shirt went like this. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna and have um, to go off the ass. Like it went videos. like this, you know, because you know, that COVID in the last three years, man, it was just like, you know, and, and I, you know what? And, and, and I mean, I know it's a little off topic, but I, I believe everyone kind of a lot of the world went through that, you know, everybody in the world. I was talking to my my physique coach, and he said he put on thirty pounds during that time. So it's it's it just. Things just happen, you know, when you talk about under training and life, life can get in the way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it definitely did. And I think as long as, you know, you're speaking to someone if you need to, because overtraining is a is an escape in, in a way, or or an addiction or 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 something that's negative, then you know that. I don't know that. But if that message is resonating with you in some way, please go, you know, seek seek some help and have conversations about it um, so that you can have a healthy relationship with your workouts, your your body and training. Um, I know that I believe it's going to be OK if you're positive and you think positive, the energy will resonate in a positive way. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. You know, so with that said, Ron, take us out. All right, I want you to stay awesome, keep stepping your greatness, and be legendary. Have the most amazing, legendary people, mobility bros, peace and love. Take care for now.